Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, today is Friday, May the 28th already. Wow, I can already believe it. And it's 3.36 p.m. Oh, we're still here. Oh, well. We got to just keep on keeping on and keep looking up because every day that passes is one day closer to our redemption and being with Jesus and getting to come back down and kick some demons out of people, put them back together, heal their illnesses, feed them with a little like Jesus did. And I had a thought the other day that, uh, what was it I was thinking we were going to uh jump tall buildings with a single bound like uh, was that superman but then I, I was like oh we can go out of here and be right there and uh, there was something else too and i thought wow i had never thought of that but i bet we could because we're gonna have superpowers isn't that wonderful okay well this is a message um well one of these is for those who won't be taken in the first round but uh, I'm going to read this uh, prophecy report from Dawn and it was stated May 24th so I've been holding on to it and another one uh, wanting to do them but I wanted to feel like you know reading them right and being into it you know what I'm saying because sometimes the Holy Spirit will give me something to say because of it or in addition to you know how it goes all right the first one is small straws in a soft wind by Marsha Burns you are chosen to be an example of my goodness and to demonstrate the kingdom how will others find me unless they perceive my presence in you it is not enough to just believe that I exist. To really believe is to clearly show through your relationship with me the existence of spiritual reality. Allow my spirit to manifest in and through you. Um... I wanted to just say, most of you know this, um, I've just got some new people from lately, and I'm not sure where you stand, um, but this part that says, how will you find me, uh, wait a minute, it is not enough to just believe that I exist. It is not enough to just believe that Jesus died for you and rose again. It's not enough to just say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins and enter into my heart. To get saved, born again, whatever expression uh, that you want to use, the moment you accept Jesus as your Savior, you are making a commitment. It's like getting married then. You're supposed to be making a commitment. And too many people make it so easy. Just repeat this prayer after me, man. And they'll say uh, three or four sentences and amen. And they'll go, congratulations, you're born into the kingdom of God. And that person is no more saved than the man in the moon because it didn't get into their heart. They didn't understand what Jesus did. For, wow, that storm is coming quick. We're under, a, I hope that's enough light. We're under a severe weather warning, but I don't think it's going to be all that severe. Um, this is getting dark. Um, so anyway... You wouldn't want to go up to the altar to marry a spouse with the preacher going, um, do you, John, take this woman, Mary, to be your lawfully wedded wife? 
to having to hold from this day forward. He says, yeah, I do. And, she, and he says the same to her, and she goes, okay, yeah, I will. Sounds good. Okay. I now pronounce you man and wife. You may now kiss your bride. And he pecks her on the cheek. Because they've never been close enough. They haven't talked enough. They haven't spent enough time to where they even feel comfortable kissing on the lips. I'm trying to make an example here, okay? Unfortunately, most people getting married have already done everything there is to do, okay? I hate to say it that way. But my videos are not made for children, all right? Same with Jesus. When you are committing your life to Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior, and you expect him to be there for you every minute, you expect Father to cover you under the shelter of his wings, you expect him to, to place the Holy Spirit in you, which is what happens if you truly believe. You get some filling of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit speaks to you. Jesus talks to the Spirit. The Spirit is who you hear in your mind when he says, read chapter, read the book of John. Read, uh, read uh, Revelation chapters 2 and 3. You might hear that. If you're sincerely praying, Lord, what would you like for me to read in my Bible? Because they should be telling you, you've got to start reading your word. If they leave that out, how are you going to learn? Okay? Okay. I could make this an hour-long video right there. But um, I have a five-minute video on my home page that tells you more. And you have to get into the word with the help of the Holy Spirit every time. So that you don't just read it like a book and either you're, what does that mean? That makes no sense. Well, if you have the Holy Spirit in you, you can go, Holy Spirit, I don't understand this sentence. But became futile in their thoughts. That's in the scripture coming up. Became futile in their thoughts. What, what does that mean? And he'll probably have you to read it again and again and look it up. That's why I use blueletterbible.org. Some people use um, Bible Gateway. Whatever way you can use to get to the Hebrew or Greek meaning. Hebrew is Old Testament. Greek is New Testament. I would suggest new believers stay in the new until they've got it down. And you may get a reference to the Old Testament. Genesis. Try to work in a chapter of Genesis every day. And then Psalms. Both great. Because in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Okay, you want to know, get to know the Godhead of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit while you're learning what Jesus did and said and how to live. Okay. I hope I haven't totally confused any new believers. The thing of it is, it's more than repeating a prayer after somebody. That's my point. Okay. Allow my spirit to manifest in and through you. You cannot leave the Holy Spirit out of your walk with God. That's what's so wrong with so many denominations. They don't invite the Holy Spirit in. They don't have an altar call. Who would like to get filled with the Holy Spirit? The devil's all behind that. Bringing in the Jesuits. They weaseled their way into the seminaries and then the seminaries taught these new hey hush the new students as they come in to learn to be pastors they teach them wrong but they don't have an excuse 
because they have a Bible. They're supposed to be born again. They should have the Holy Spirit. But if they came out of one of those denominations that didn't have anything to do with the Holy Spirit, they're at a loss already. They're going into a school to learn to do the same thing the guy taught them. Anyway, the verse, Romans 1, 20-23. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen. His invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, <clears throat> excuse me, so that they are without excuse, because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts. That means their thoughts were like useless, futile. Their efforts were futile, not bringing any fruit. They, their efforts of whatever they did, whatever they read in the word, they didn't get it from here to here because they didn't do it with the Holy Spirit and their foolish hearts were darkened you see that's why so many people have done what they have done it's like a third of Americans two-thirds of Israel of course they're all atheists most of them honestly they don't even serve God anymore anyway that's the end of that one by Marsha Burns. I'm going to move on. <coughs> Excuse me, I'll get a drink. Okay. <coughs> this is called The Choices We Make. And it was given, I guess, May 22nd, 712 a.m. by... Liv, no, I'm probably going to butcher this last name, Hino Joza. It, I don't know how she would say it. Hino Joza. Probably wrong, but whatever. That's what it looks like. Last night, while getting ready for bed, the Lord spoke to me. He showed me standing in line with other people. <laughs> Hey, 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 stop making that noise. The choice we were about to make was to deny Jesus and take the mark in order to live or die. I chose to stand for Jesus. I knew this meant death. When it came my turn to make my final decision, my last words were shouted out to everyone standing in line. If Jesus died for you, are you willing to die for him? Immediately, the Lord brought me out of this vision. And told me, share this with everyone for those who will have to go through this. If we deny him, we will spend eternity without him. Where was I? Okay. If we stand for him and even die for him, we will forever be with him. The choice is ours to make, and he will respect our decision. He won't make us stay alive. He won't make us die for him. 
He will respect our decision. God does not force himself on anyone. Okay, this is still part of what he said. And when he had called the people unto him, oh, I, I'm sorry, the, uh, the way they put it was not clear. This is the, the, um, the scripture under it. And when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world? And lose his own soul. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? What or whosoever, therefore, shall be ashamed, whosoever, therefore, shall be ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation. Of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father and the holy angels. And that's Mark 8, 34 through 38. All right. Yeah, this part, whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me, and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation. It sounds like it was just written, doesn't it? That, to me, sounds like it was written for this day and age. Of course, they were doing it back then. But it, it, it's for now, it's for such a time as this, even more so. Because... People could repent on their deathbed. There, I don't know if they had earthquakes back then. They didn't have big, tall buildings falling in on them, but they had houses of some kind, and uh, rocks could fall on them from mountaintops if there was an earthquake. But the point is, most people, I would think, most of the world would be die of old age and lay on their deathbed and have time to repent if they haven't. What's about to happen? If you don't go in the first rapture, when the restrainer is taken out of the way, it's not going to be pretty. And you need to be ready. You need to be ready People don't wait for the last day thinking you're going to have time to repent of something you're doing. If you're sleeping with somebody or you're doing something you know is wrong, you better stop it today. It'd be hard. I know it. It's really hard. Because I lived with the men I married. I lived with them first. Yes, I was an adulterous whore. But the Lord brought me out of that. I got to make the decision myself. I didn't have a, all the stuff happening that gave me the, the knowledge. Uh, I wasn't watching TV and seeing... Oh, war's about to break out. We're about to have a famine. The economy's about to collapse. And people are saying Jesus is coming. And oh my goodness, I'd better repent. I, You know, I didn't have that. Once I married my third husband and he turned out to be doing the things he was doing, I was like, what have I done? 
again. Why? I got mad. I had prayed for a godly man. I wanted a godly man that would help me stop smoking. How ridiculous is that? I was a smoker off and on. More off than on, but on at the time. And I didn't want to be. I wanted to quit, but I was having trouble. And I thought, I find a godly man, and because he don't smoke, it'll help me quit, and so forth, so on. Well, no, I married a man that smoked, not just cigarettes, not just weed. Get my drift? Yeah, but I didn't know it. I had a hint. I had an idea. But really, I didn't find out until after. Anyway, why did I say that? I, right after we got married, within weeks, after I got done being mad at God for asking him, is this who you, what you thought I deserved? Yes, it was. Instead of asking for getting closer to God and seeking him, his ways, what do you want me to do next? I was praying and crying out, I got to have a husband. Lord, would please help me find a husband, a godly man that will really help me to grow and we'll grow together. And <sighs> Ridiculous. But I was with him for a long time, 11 years. And because I would not pay for the divorce since he was sleeping with his old girlfriend. I said, I'm out of here. Um, I lived somewhere that had a gated community so he couldn't just pop over. Casey lost his job and his car and place to live. Thank you. That's dinner. They hang it on the door. I ordered dinner tonight. Anyway, I don't even know why, why I'm telling you this. Somebody had to hear it. Like I said, I got some new people, and you all don't know my story. And I left him in 2009, and I moved here in 2012 or 11. I don't remember doesn't matter and Jesus has been my husband ever since and I've never been happier I mean yes all three marriages had their good times and their bad and I can thank God and praise him for what each one taught me and that third husband helped me to help my girls when they needed help. When he was straightened up and living right and working, he made good money. So I have to thank God for that. I mean, our lives may not have been perfect. But what can you think of that's good? And whatever you think of that's not, you have to forgive. You have to forgive. I don't care how hurt you were. You have to forgive. And it might be really hard. But you better fast and pray until you can. And let me give you a little secret of how I was able to forgive a couple of people in my past. I started praying for them. I started picturing them as they were when they were little children. How were they treated? Why did they grow up to be like they were? Well, I have a pretty good idea. And when that started coming to my mind, I was able to pray for them with genuine love for their soul so they were forgiven and prayed for 
and that may be very hard for you, but you better find out how to do it. You take it to the Lord and do it. All right. This next one is May 24th. It says, let me have your disappointment, anger, and fear. Oh, my goodness. Don't these just roll together? Jesus defeated your enemies on the cross, but Satan is plummeting your emotions with those thoughts. I give you the power to defeat the thoughts and emotions. I give you the power to overcome. I know the end from the beginning, and you have already won. Replace the bad thoughts with thoughts of victory and contentment. I will not leave you alone. Trust me. All will end well. Be strong. You see, he's telling you that he is more than able to help you overcome any feelings, thoughts, and emotions you have from your past. And the verse is Isaiah 41.10 from the NASB. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not anxiously look about you, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Surely I will help you. Surely I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And that was received by Bev Robinson. Wow. I read all this a couple days ago because, I mean, back when I got it, because I, I was like, oh, Lord, I want to make a video of this, but I don't, I just don't feel like it right now. And each day I was, I've just been so tired, y'all. Thank you for your prayers because I know some of you are praying for me. And I know it's helping. I had to sleep again this morning, but these last three days, I did not. And I tried to get a nap, but I could not sleep for a nap. So that accumulated, and today I had to, I had to go right back to bed, and I slept until about 1.30. Anyway, so I feel better. Now, this last one says, I see a person feeling like they have been taken advantage of. Can you relate? You feel as if the odds are stacked against you and nothing will ever change. Confess this feeling and move on. If you continue in this flow, you will go down a dark hole. This is not for you, believer. You are a city set on a hill, not a person in a dark hole. When you realize who you truly are, nothing can stop you. Wow. God is so amazing. Matthew 5, 14 was added. Your lives light up the world. For how can you hide a city that stands on a hilltop? <laughs> and this was received by Robin Robinson Bolin. I plead the blood of Jesus over this video and over each and every single one of us and all of our devices and our internet connections. With that, I'll say bye for now. I'll talk to you later.